So here's question 52. By considering the coefficients of x to the power of 2r, where 2r is less than n, in the expansion of this and 1 minus x to the power of n, show this relationship is true. Now this is a, actually a very difficult question. So let's have a look at how to do this. So first of all, we have to consider the coefficient of x to the power of 2r in the expansion of this and this. Notice they are exactly the same, it's just a different way of writing it. Okay, and we let c left hand side um, and c right hand side be the coefficient of x to the power of 2r in this expression. Okay, now the next step is to actually expand all of these three things individually. Okay, now let's compare the coefficient of x to the power of 2r on the left hand side. First of all, let's find out what um, find out the coefficient of x to the power of 2r when we have this line multiplied by this line here. Okay, let's think. This first coefficient n to 0, in order to have a coefficient of x to the power of 2r, that n to 0 must multiply by a term in here that gives us n choose 2r. Okay, so n choose 2r in here belongs to x to the power of 2r. So that when this time multiplied by n to 0, we get x, um, the coefficient of x to the power of 2r for that term. Now the next one, when we have minus n choose 1, this must multiply by a term in here that gives n, n choose r minus 1. And then the next term, when we have n choose 2, this must multiply by n choose 2r minus 2. Okay, now if you want to see um, why, we can see that n choose 1 belongs to the coefficient of x to the power of 0 in the first expansion, and n choose 2r belongs to x to the power of 2r in the second expansion. And this one belongs to x, and this be, um, is the coefficient that belongs to x to the power of 2r minus 1. As you can see, when we multiply them, we get x to the power of 2r. When we multiply these, we also get x to the power of 2r, and this belongs to x to the power of x squared in the first expansion, and this belongs to the coefficient of x to the power of 2r minus 2. Again, when you multiply them, we get x to the power of 2r. Now let's continue. Now we can see that the middle term here, we have x to the power of r multiplied by x to the power of r, so that when we multiply them, we get x to the power of 2r. Hence, the coefficient must equal to minus 1 to the power of r, n choose r, multiplied by n choose r. Okay, let's write out a few more terms. Now, following this, let's think. Um, some term in here multiplied by n choose 2, um, x to the power of 2, so that term multiplied by this term must give us x to the power of 2r. And that term in here must equal to Okay, so this is actually the coefficient that belongs to a term in here, and this is the coefficient of x to the power of 2r minus 2, and this is the coefficient of x squared that belongs to 
this expansion, so x squared. And you can see that when we multiply them, we get x to the power of 2r. So similarly, let's continue this. What we need to do is we need to actually simplify this expression. Now we know that since r must be an integer, is an element, so since r is an element of the integer, then 2r must be even. And 2r minus 1 must be odd. Etc. And how does this help us? If 2r is even, then it means this must be a positive term. And if 2r minus 1 is odd, then this must be a negative term. And still, how, how does that help us? We can see that if this is positive, then this equals to the first term here. And if this is negative, then this equals to this term here. And if this is positive, then this equals to this. We can see that if this is true, or which is true, then the first term equals to the last term, the second term equals to the second last term, the third term equals to the third last term. So which means we can simplify this to two lots of entry 0, entry 2r, plus minus and choose 1 and choose 2r minus 1 plus and choose 2 and choose 2r minus 2. Okay, where does this end? This ends, let's have a look at, this is the middle term. Now we can see that the previous, the term before this equals to the term next to this. So what is the term before this? The term before this equals to minus 1 to the power of r minus 1 and choose r minus 1 and choose r plus 1. Okay, and this term is exactly in the middle and it does not double up, so we have to leave it outside and plus, plus by itself. Now let's look at the coefficient of x to the power of 2r on the right hand side. Now that's quite easy because if you look at this expansion then x to the power of 2r on the right hand side equals to this. And of course since we are comparing the same term x to the power of 2r then the coefficient of on the left hand side equals to the coefficient of on the right hand side. So let's write this out. Now we will divide the entire equation by negative 1 to the power of r to simplify this. And let's write one more term before this so we can relate back to our question. Okay, now let's simplify each term. Okay, 1 divided by minus 1 to the power of r is the same as minus 1 to the power of r. 
1 because 1 divided by minus 1 is the same as minus 1. So that's minus 1 to the power of r. And n to 0 is 1, so we, can, we don't have to write this term. And this is, again, the same as minus 1 to the power of r. And this one must be positive. Why? Because when you have r minus 2 divided by r, we get minus 1 to the power of minus 2, which is even. So we just have a positive value. So we get n, choose r minus 2, and choose r plus 2. And this one must be negative, because when you have r minus 1 to the minus um, r, we get minus 1 to the power of minus 1, which is negative. So let's leave it up here. And these, they cancel out. Okay, similarly, the right-hand side, they cancel out, giving you n choose r. Okay, now let's compare this value with our question and um, see, so we can see the similarity. Now this part here equals to this, and this part here equals to this. And of course, the last few bits equals to these terms here. So, but there's one thing that we need to know is that this last part here is a negative value, but this is a positive value. And the second part here is a negative, but here is a positive. So what we need to do is we need to multiply the entire equation by negative 1 to get rid of that negative so we can turn it back into the same form as our question. So we need to multiply the entire equation by negative 1. And at the same time, I'm going to reverse the order um, to make it look like this. So I'm going to write this first, then this one, and then this one's last. Okay, it's just like when you have A plus B plus C, it's the same as C plus B plus A. Okay, multiplying this by negative 1, negative becomes a positive. And when you multiply this term by negative 1, we can get... Well, we can skip this term because it's not in the question, so let's start with this one. So when you multiply this one by negative 1, negative times negative becomes a positive. So we get negative 1 to the power of r, and choose 1, and choose 2r minus 1. Then this one becomes negative minus 1 to the power of r, and choose 2r. And this becomes a negative, and this also becomes a negative. So therefore, to make this the subject, we just need to move this bit to the right hand side and divide it by two. So let's do that. Now I'm going to write. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to write out this whole thing again. This takes too long. divided by 2, and as you can see, when we take out the common factor and choose r, we get our answer. That's it.